as a bookkeeper, how do you decide in QuickBooks what tasks you're going to do and what tasks your client is going to do? This is a question from one of you guys, and I thought more people might be kind of confused about how do different parties work within QuickBooks when you're working with bookkeeping clients. My name is Morgan. Check out my website, finepoints.biz, and I have a free masterclass and checklist you can also check out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and a thumbs up it really does help me out a lot. All right, so just a quick outline of what I'm gonna talk about. First, I'm gonna talk about my experience and what my clients do. Then I'm gonna talk about larger clients and smaller clients, then how to set up systems. And finally, if you want your clients to get out of QuickBooks, some tips for that. So starting off with how do I work with my clients in QuickBooks? I'm gonna tell you right now that probably 90% of my clients never go into QuickBooks. Like the amount of time that they go in there is very, very small. And it has happened multiple times where maybe the owner or someone is doing the bookkeeping, especially if they're kind of like starting out trying to figure out their systems. And then when I take it over, they're, you know, maybe they're like, oh, I think maybe I'll go into QuickBooks sometimes, but then after a while, they kind of never do. Usually they're pretty happy to have it off their plate and they really just rely on the reports that I send them each month. So that has been my experience with most of my clients. I'm gonna tell you a couple different scenarios. First, starting with like a really small client that maybe doesn't want to afford or they can't afford to hire like a bookkeeper in a large capacity. And I do have a video all about small, medium, and large clients that you might find helpful as well. The thumbnail looks like this. You can check it out after this one. So sometimes, usually for cost reasons, a small client might want either like an office worker, an office manager or something, or the owner themselves to be doing the day-to-day -day, like bookkeeping. So they would go in and categorize all of the transactions within QuickBooks Online. So this is probably one of the more like labor intensive parts of mon like monthly bookkeeping. And it's also helpful because then the owner would know exactly what they bought. And so you wouldn't have any questions. You know, they're like, oh yeah, I know I bought like snacks at Safeway or I bought a new computer at Office Depot. So they would be categorizing those things day to day. And then they might hire you as the bookkeeper to look over things probably maybe quarterly or every month, maybe reconcile the bank account. So kind of do like that final check, make sure everything's looking good and just use you as a resource for any troubleshooting. So in that scenario, that's maybe like a 50 50 split, or maybe you as the bookkeeper would even have less things to do within QuickBooks. And there are different levels of QuickBooks Online and different levels have different amounts of users. So I'm pretty sure that if your client is the owner of the QuickBooks subscription, they can add you as an accountant and that does not take one of their users. So the next group I'm gonna talk about is larger clients that have a lot more going on. They probably have more people working in their office. For these type of larger clients, you'll probably want to get a higher subscription of QuickBooks if they need a lot of users and a lot of people going in there at once. I have a video I made a couple months ago and it's all about how to work within QuickBooks, how to decide what level of QuickBooks to get for your clients and that kind of thing. The thumbnail looks like this and I'm gonna leave it linked in the description box for you guys. For these larger clients, I'm assuming that you are working as a remote bookkeeper. And of course you can set it up where you go into the office if it is a local client, but part of the fun of being a bookkeeper is the freedom to work from home and to work for anyone anywhere in the US. So assuming that you are remote, um, there might be some paper or some money handling that's going on in the office that you are not involved in, and that is totally fine. So they can set up their workflow however it works for them. But one example might be, so for money coming in, maybe this office is getting a mixture of checks, cash, and then some credit card transactions. So there's someone in the office, maybe like a front desk person, who is in charge of taking cash, and then they organize it somehow in a deposit, and then someone brings it to the bank, right? So someone in the office then would most likely have be a QuickBooks user, one of your users, and they could enter the deposit into QuickBooks. And then you as the bookkeeper, you know, when you're doing your weekly or monthly reconciliation and categorizing, you would see, oh yeah, okay, so they recorded this deposit um, of, you know, $500, and then I see it come through the bank, that $500, QuickBooks would know that those two things match, and you would go on your merry way of categorizing those things. And if you didn't want that office worker to be in QuickBooks, you could also come up with an alternative workflow. Maybe they enter in a spreadsheet somewhere or they, you know, I have a client who does like a paper ledger for deposits, which is kind of old school and we'd like to get them more in QuickBooks. So think about this in the different bookkeeping tasks that we talked about. So that was money coming in as well as you could 
have a similar system for invoices. So maybe someone in the office is creating the invoices because they have the information available to them on the clients and who needs to like be charged what. And then those invoices are paid by their clients. So at some point you as the bookkeeper are going to kind of take over parts of that workflow and maybe you apply the payment to the invoice. Same with payroll. So maybe there are office managers in the office that are approving people's hours and you as the bookkeeper are in charge of either running payroll through a payroll company like Gusto or through QuickBooks payroll. But generally my job as the bookkeeper is to make sure everything is entering, coming into QuickBooks correctly and it's reconciled at the end of the month. So how do you set up these systems? Because you might be thinking this sounds kind of complicated, like you don't know how to create all these workflows. And I would encourage you that a lot of the times it's not just you in a vacuum trying to create these things. So if you start working for a bigger client, a bigger company that does have a lot of these moving parts and a lot of different people doing different tasks, they'll probably already have some systems in place. They're like, oh, Susan takes stuff to the bank every Thursday and Jonathan sends out invoices every other day. They probably have some systems set up. And it is very common for businesses to constantly be evolving. So with the addition of a bookkeeper or any kind of new person or a new type of business that they're doing, they always have to kind of tweak these things. So I find it easiest to kind of just use the workflow that is already set up and then try it out for a couple months. And then if I see places where things could be more efficient, then at that point I can suggest that to the managers or to whoever is kind of in charge of these different pieces. And kind of conversely with the tiny clients, maybe the solopreneurs, their business is so small that it's probably more simple. Like you can probably treat it almost like your personal finances. Like how do I pay bills? Like, am I able to use my bank's bill pay? Like stuff like that. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Usually either you're going to have a support system or you, it's going to be simple enough that you can figure it out and just rely on resources around you. You can Google stuff. You can ask questions in bookkeeper Facebook groups if you're kind of stuck on like how to do a certain process, but I really do have confidence that you're going to be able to figure it out. All right. And a couple tips for how to keep clients out of QuickBooks if they get in there and cause trouble. So you will find sometimes that either maybe an owner is really overzealous and they want to, you know, always be in QuickBooks trying to like tweak things, or maybe there's a office person that's trying to do something that isn't working out. I would say most of the time, these people have good intentions. They really truly are just trying their best or they want to understand the finances better. So well, number one, try to be as patient as you can and you can explain it from your perspective. You know, be like, this is my part of the workflow and this is your part of the workflow. And if you have the users set up, I think there is visibility to who has done what. So if there's mistakes, you need to kind of bring something to light. Hopefully you'll be able to track who did what. Another thing that can be really helpful is that you can use a period and password. So as soon as you finish a month or any certain period, maybe a quarter or a year, you can close that period off and make it password protected. So if anyone is trying to tinker with things with old invoices or old reconciled transaction, QuickBooks will be like, wait, before you go any farther, you need the password. And hopefully that should alleviate a lot of those problems. My third idea for how to keep people kind of out of QuickBooks is you can lean on third party apps. So maybe partner with some of these apps. So bill.com is one that helps you pay bills. Obviously there's HubDoc and Dex. And all of these are systems where your client can feed like information and paperwork through. So if they're emailed a bill, for example, they can put it into bill.com and then you can connect bill.com to QuickBooks and then maybe you are the only one who is working in QuickBooks if that is what you prefer. Most of these apps do cost some money. There is a cost associated with them, but you can see if that is worth it to help out your workflow. All right, the fifth tip is just kind of wear them down with like constant training. So maybe every Monday morning you look in QuickBooks and you see what was changed from when I was last in here. And then you call up the office manager and you're like, okay, can you please go in and switch this like invoice to this because you did it wrong basically. Um, you know, and just keep continually perfecting their process. And what's gonna happen is either they're gonna, they're gonna be trained to do it the right way or they're going to get so sick of you like bugging them about it that they're going to like hand some of that process over to you as the bookkeeper. And the last idea I have, if people are tinkering with your QuickBooks is just charge more because it is taking you more time to correct those mistakes in a lot of cases. And so you want to make sure you're being fairly compensated for your time. And hopefully that will serve as a motivator to your client that they can do the process as you prefer. 
Let me know in the comments what other videos you would like to see, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for a new video next week. I will talk to you then. Bye.